Thanks for staying with us. Let's talk education now. The National Universities Commission has presented a letter of recognition for the official takeoff of the University of Elisha. The presentation is an indication of the successful completion of the formal documentation process for the establishment of the university. Ocean State Governor Adegwe Gawiyetola used the opportunity to reiterate his administration's commitment to ensuring the establishment of the university will not in any way put a necessary financial burden on the state. The governor said the event has further given credence to his administration's commitment to upgrading the 44-year-old College of Education to a university. With the recognition, the university becomes the 60th state university and 220th university in Nigeria. The NEC's executive secretary commended the governor for the initiative, saying the establishment of the university remains one of the most important legacies of Governor Oyetola's administration. The University of Elisha, located in Elisha, Ocean State, has been recognized as the 60th state-owned university in Nigeria and the 220th university in the Nigerian university system. The National University Commission, the NUC, pledges its support to the university. Higher educational institutions are also critical and center the development of well rounded leaders and skilled personnel in all areas of human activities. Hence, the need to develop a correct college of education in the full fledged university to train and equip a diverse group of youths with professional skills entrepreneurial ability and innovative insight, especially in agribusiness and mining. Away from that, as part of efforts to fight unemployment and youth-related crimes, the Boy State government has commenced the empowerment of youth with agricultural production skills. The youth were empowered in an agro-training institute in Asarawa State and are expected to put the knowledge gained into productive use. Lara Falaya reports. These young Nigerians have successfully acquired skills in different areas of agricultural productivity. It was facilitated by the Eboy State Government to help address issues of unemployment in the country and also reduce crimes. The government says the participants will be given financial support to properly implement skills acquired towards world creation from agriculture. We're going to empower them. We're going to put them into like an association. But we're back home, we also have people that we've empowered, you know, ranging from 300,000 to 5 million. And so if you put all these people together, that's, I'm talking about the past, uh, you know, three months, uh, it will be about 10,000. So we form them into an association and then uh, form them into a very strong uh, force and the, the club is going to be a millionaire club, farmers club, you know. And Hopes are high that the resources spent on getting these young men and women agriculturally empowered will yield positive results. We have uh, graduated from infrastructure which we have laid a reversible foundation for our state and now it's time to build on the infrastructure and so we are building these people and uh, you know agriculture is one of it and from there industries will also spring up. Oh, multi-millionaires uh, to graduate to multi-billionaires uh, and this is God's vision because every step of it is God's directives. The participants say they are ready to hit the ground running by implementing skills learned in agricultural activities that will impact the economy positively. We thank him, we learned like uh, poultry production, uh, we learned fishery management, fishery production, so, and so many of them. I, I know that I'm going to kickstart very well in poultry, and feed, uh, poultry business and uh, fishery business. Both. And we are really going to impact on other people in a boy state. As I'm going, I will be part I will impart my knowledge on those places like fishery and uh, poultry. I like it very well. What I see here, I am amazed. Economic watchers believe agriculture has great potentials for job creation and poverty alleviation, and the Eboy State Government is positive. Its capacity building exercise for these young people will achieve the desired objectives. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. Elsewhere, dignitaries from all walks of life have eulogized the late lady evangelist Grace Akiridolu, mother of Ondo State Governor Rutimi Akiridolu, for living an exemplary life. 
They spoke during a burial service and reception for the deceased in the ancient town of Owo, Hondo State. Ayodhi Jamoradeo reports. Dignitaries came from all walks of life to be part of the final burial ceremony of Madame Grace Akeredolu, mother of Ondo State Governor Rotimi Akeredolu. The ancient town of Owa was agog as they stormed the St. Andrew's Anglican Church Owa to pay their last respect to the deceased. <laughs> Governors, ministers, party chieftains flooded the church to be part of the event. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Ashiwaju Bola Mentinumbu, Chief Bisi Akande, among others, were present at the church service. We thank God for her. But I also want to thank you. My Chancellor, I want to thank you. I thank all members of the family. Because Mama did not only look after you, you also looked after her. Some of the dignities described with the seas as an epitome of motherhood. Mama lived a very beautiful life, ripe old age of 90. Most importantly, she served God. And the evidence of God's favor in her life is this glorious exit and the worthy children she left behind. Mama lived a graceful life, which is a source of encouragement to all of us living. I left behind. So you call it leave, leave legacy. Now what I get to say about me, about you. I believe for her. All our seven children are alive, kicking, and doing very well in each of their chosen career. For some members of the state executive council, traditional rulers, and party chieftains, the late Grace Akedolu live a life worthy of emulation. Don't you see the children they have? They are all very successful in life. They have governor, they have professor, they have doctor, they have lawyer. They have nurse, and so on and so Business uh, takut. Mother in millions. When you talk about a devoted Christian, you find her there. When you talk about mother, who's so caring for the children, you find her there. The late Grace Akre Dolu died on the 15th of September 2022. At the age of 90 years, I do Jim Radeo TVC News. Outside Nigeria, the Democratic Party will retain majority control of the United States Senate after winning a pivotal race in Nevada. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto defeated Republican challenger Adam Laxalt. Her victory gives Democrats 50 seats in the 118th Congress. U.S. President Joe Biden says she is in, he is incredibly pleased at his party's victory in the upper chamber of Congress. The result puts them one ahead of Republicans, with the Georgia Senate seat to be decided in December. Cortez Bastos' opponent, Adam Laxalt, had been backed by Donald Trump, who may announce another presidential run in the coming days. Meanwhile, Republicans appear to be inching closer to a majority in the House of Representatives, one of them, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, says Trump is to blame for the party's poor performance. Well, I tell you what, congratulations to Senator Schumer. He's got a majority again, and we're focusing now on, on Georgia. We feel good about where we are. And uh, I know uh, I'm a cockeyed optimist. I understand that from the beginning, but uh, I'm not surprised by the turnout. I'm incredibly pleased by the turnout. And I think it's a reflection of uh, the quality of our candidates. And they, they're all running on the same program. There wasn't anybody who wasn't running on what we did. They're all staying, with, st st sticking with it. And so uh, I feel good. I'm looking forward to the next couple of years. U.S. President Joe Biden there. Sports now. The sixth edition of the annual Efron Worry Peace Marathon will take place on the 26th of November as organizers look to expand the 10-kilometer race in the Twin Cities, which is meant to be a fun run to promote harmony among residents. At a press briefing in Asaba, the chief organizer, Joyce Bozimo, revealed the introduction of a corporate relay race open for personnel of corporations and organizations was churches, security forces, and institutions already showing interest. Ikenamichi reports. 
Initiated in 2016, the race is to foster communal living among residents of a frum worry and environ which is hitherto characterized by clashes, especially involving young people. Over the past six years, the race has featured participants from these cities and beyond to facilitate peaceful relationship and friendship. Towards the sixth edition built to hold on the 26th of November, the organizer is taking the race a notch higher with some innovations. This press conference affords her opportunity to unveil her plans. We've invited companies, schools, churches to join so that we all do it together. And how are we doing it? A lot of people were saying that ah, they can't run 10 kilometers. We said, no, no problem. Let's do corporate relay challenge. That means that companies can come, you bring five of your workers, each will run two kilometers. It's a relay. When they win, the money goes to the five of them. And we've gotten our first, the Navy, the Nigerian Navy, the written, they want to join. They are bringing 10 people to run with us. The Air Force said they are ready to run. The race, which is a brainchild of Joy Bozumo, has enjoyed partnership with the state government, but more support is needed to make it bigger and better. I appeal to corporate bodies to join us, give us a, sponsor, a sponsorship deal, so that the thing will get bigger, beyond worry and effort. It goes beyond Delta. It goes beyond national. The race is open for everyone to participate as registration is ongoing. Ikenna Amechi, TVC News, as.